everyone, and welcome to our Q&A with NaNoWriMo's Executive Director, Grant Faulkner. I'm Micah, and I am actually a NaNo participant myself, big fan, have been doing it since 2015, so I absolutely love it and love the community that has been built around it. So I am super excited to host today's session. Grant, it is great to have you here today. Likewise, I did, I think, my first webcast with ProWriting Aid a year ago. Maybe I've done two, I forget. But anyway, Pro Writing Aid has been a great sponsor and partner of NaNoWriMo. So uh, I love uh, my annual webcast with you all. There, there is a lot of great stuff that can come out, out of it. Actually, in fact, I think I may have my job with Pro Writing Aid because I think I've discovered PWA through NaNoWriMo. So oh, good. guys, there can be amazing things that come out of it, actually. It's amazing. We've had people find jobs. We've had people get married. We've had people had babies, all because of NaNoWriMo and write novels So <laughs> and more. And, and more. All right. Well, Grant, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself, kind of your role at NaNoWriMo, all of that good stuff? Yeah. Um, well, I'm a lifetime fiction writer. I, uh, you know, I started writing before I could write, essentially. I remember getting an idea for a series of books and running downstairs to tell my mother, uh, but she was on the phone. And so I <laughs> never got to tell her my brilliant idea for a series, but then she bought me a little antique roll top desk the following year and I was a lifetime writer from that point on and yeah writing has just led me into many many things being a journalist being a teacher working in corporate communications and then finally finding my professional home in writing nonprofits and so I first wrote or first had, had a nonprofit job with the National Writing Project which focuses on improving the teaching of writing in the nation's schools and then that led me to National Novel Writing Month where I was first on the board and uh, when I joined the board, Chris Beatty, the founder, told me that he was stepping down and he encouraged me to apply to be executive director, which I had never considered doing. Uh, but Chris has a way of convincing people to do things that they don't <laughs> want to do, like write a novel in a month. He's also, <laughs> he's also really good at that. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of background of NaNoWriMo is that Chris actually founded NaNoWriMo in 1999. So we're getting to be a pretty mature organization. And he is really good about convincing people to write novels, and we can talk more about that. But, you know, NaNoWriMo in that first year started out with just Chris and 20 of his friends, and they met in coffee shops after work. And so the interesting thing to me is that they had that, um, it was one part writing boot camp, as I like to say, and that's the challenge to write 50,000 words in a day, or in a month, excuse me. And then in one part, rollicking writing party, because you bring in other people and you you have a lot of fun with them while you're writing. And so that started in 1999 and it grew from those 20 people to you know about 500,000 people, which we have right with us uh, every year. We're now year round programs too. We're not just the month of November. And we have a young writers program that focuses on writing in the schools and 100,000 kids and teens take part in that. So yeah, so anyway, there's a lot to tell there. That's, that's the shorthand, I probably rambled, yeah. but. Something well, no, with. that's amazing to see that something started off with just, you know, 21 people, basically, yeah. and it's grown to be such a worldwide international thing. Uh, like I said, I love the community aspect of it. It is always so much fun. I always am constantly trying to get my other writer friends to join us with NaNoWriMo. I've succeeded a couple of times, but I don't think I'm going to be able to pull them in this year, unfortunately. Now, that does kind of bring us to a little bit about, I think as writers, we know what 50,000 words feels like. You know, we know what it is like to write that much. But for some of our non-writer friends, I think they kind of hear, oh, you're writing 50,000 words in a month. And they might go, well, how, how long is that? You know, that's, I mean, <laughs> is that actually a book? I mean, how much are you actually writing? How do you think you would elevate or pitch this event to a non-writer friend that not may not be as aware of actually doing it firsthand? Well, I think I'd start with that phrase, that word non-writer, because I actually don't believe that people are non-writers. Uh, sometimes that point, when I tell people about NaNoWriMo and encourage them to do it, they say, oh, I'm not a writer, or I don't have a story to tell, or I'm not creative. But to be human is to be creative. To be human is to tell stories. If you think about it, stories are, are I mean, I think it was uh, Ursula Le Guin who said, um, stories are our manuals, our guidebooks of life. And they are. Almost everything we know about the world, we channel through the stories we tell and the stories that we read and the stories we hear. And so we're all storytellers. And so it's just a matter of identifying that story and then giving ourselves permission to tell it. 
And so I think I'd start with that. And I tell people like, you're a writer and you're a storyteller. And oftentimes what happens, there's this great Picasso quote is that every child is born an artist. The challenge is how to be an artist when you're grown up. And I think too many of us lose that sort of whimsy and playfulness and just that ability to jump in and, and just be creative. Mm -hmm. And so you can be creative just like you can finger paint. Everybody can finger paint too, you know, and you can take joy in that. And, and so NaNoWriMo, writing 50,000 words, yeah, it sounds like a lot of work, but it's really about storytelling and having fun with stories and doing it with friends, if that's the way you prefer to participate. And so that's the writing party part of it. And so I would encourage people that it's so rare in your life to make creativity the number one priority for 30 days. And that's what NaNoWriMo is. It's just an invitation to make creativity a priority for one month. You know, it's not a bad thing to do for one month. We make many other things priority for a month. We wash dishes. We uh, take care of our cars and dogs and cats and children and workplaces and all these things. So why not make creativity also a priority for a month? Make those things a little bit more secondary. Grant, that is amazing. And that's a, such an inspirational way to look at it too. That's just awesome. All right. So just looking through the chat, we do have some folks that are kind of hitting on some good points that I'd like to jump to next. Why 50,000 words in a month? <laughs> well, Chris Beatty, when he, he literally did kind of found this accidentally. He didn't think that he was founding a nonprofit or a movement. He just wanted to write a novel. And here's another good principle of NaNoWriMo. He didn't, he hadn't read any how to write a novel books. He hadn't taken any novel writing workshops. He was just a, a reader and loved reading novels. And so one day he woke up and literally looked at his bookshelf and pulled out some of the slimmer volumes. So think Catcher in the Rye or The Great Gatsby. And, and some of those books, he did a rough tally of how many words were in them. And it was 50,000 words, roughly. And he just did some very complicated calculus math and figured out that writing 50,000 words in a month was doable. You know, that's 1,677 words a day. So that's a lot and it's tough, as you said, but it's also doable. And so he just sent himself that audacious goal based on that and invited his friends to join him. So that's why 50,000. Okay, awesome. And I think that also hits on another question that we've got is with your word counts, are you looking to do a solid count that looks nice and pretty, or is it just getting that rough unedited draft down on the page? It's mostly about the rough unedited draft. And so another point of brilliance that Chris identified when writing, doing NaNoWriMo that first time was that a lot of people put obstacles in front of themselves and their creativity. And one obstacle is perfectionism. And so a lot of people think, that their rough draft, or they get discouraged because their rough draft, you know, they have this idea of a novel, a perfect novel, and it's their favorite novel, you know, that they've read maybe three times. And then when they start writing their novel, their writing on the page doesn't match. There's a big chasm between that, that perfect novel and the novel they're writing. And so they get discouraged and they quit. They call and say they're not a writer. But the fact is that every novel, every Shakespeare play, every story by Kafka, every story, you know, every Harry Potter novels, they started as crappy rough drafts. Seriously, if, if, if our Pulitzer Prize winning, Nobel Prize winning authors would show us the rough drafts, the rough drafts would likely look like ours, you know, they would, they would look like they're a, a kind of raw mess of ideas that need a lot of cleaning up and revision. And so that's what happens with most of the novels we love is that they're revised kind of endlessly by the author and then by the author's agent or editor before they arrive in this beautiful book that we then get to read. And so I think like the thing is, is just to focus on exploring your story, giving yourself permission to tell it, um, not questioning yourself or doubting yourself. So we have the principle of banishing your inner editor, which really is your inner critic, your inner perfectionist, and then really focus on that joyful act of creativity. And that's why I mentioned children and finger painting is like, think about writing your novel as like an exploration and finger painting, just take joy in it. Yeah, absolutely. And your uh, discussion about the gap always reminds me of Ira Glass's talk about the taste gap that, you know, we see what is great art and is published and everything else. And then we look at our own work and we're like, no, it's not that good. But yeah. you're absolutely right. It's stuff that has been edited over and over and over. By the time something gets to the shelves, you might have had 10, 20, 30 people who have had their hands on that work and have edited it. 
So, yeah. you know, that's just something that we all have to keep in mind. And I saw in the chat, one of our folks mentioned they probably won't be using pro writing aid during NaNoWriMo. Guys, absolutely. I would suggest not okay. going for the editing during nano unless you are a nano rebel, which we'll get to in just a second. But save that for December because those are the what now months in which we get these drafts whipped into edited shape and basically get them ready for the world to see. So that is always something that we can help out with a pro writing aid in December. But for now, guys, just concentrate on getting those words on the page ultimately. Yeah, I think uh, we oftentimes that one of the big mistakes or misconceptions of, of NaNoWriMo is that people think that we that we're saying you can write a complete novel in a month. And so they think that we're saying write a novel in a month with us and then publish it right after. And we, we don't say that we believe in revision, we believe in rewriting, we believe in using tools like pro writing aid to help you um, finish your draft in fine form. And that always, it also touches a bit on um, how NaNoWriMo is now year round, because I think, you know, that goes into the what now months, that goes into camp, all of that good stuff. So could you talk a little bit about the other events that go on outside of November's, you know, main attraction, I suppose? Yeah, it is our main attraction. And that's where, you know, a lot of people show up and write with us. But uh, we have um, events, different events that we support and the different ways to write year round. And so... In terms of events, we have I Wrote a Novel, Now What?, which happens in January and February. And that's when we focus on helping people revise and edit their novels, also to make publishing decisions, like whether you want to go the traditional route. If that's the case, maybe how do you find an edit? Or how do you find an agent? How do you work with an editor? If you want to self-publish, you know, we tell you that's a, there's a steep, you know, lot, lot to learn there. So we guide you on that pathway. And then we have, as you mentioned, uh, Camp NaNoWriMo, which happens in April and July. And I think the best way to, to describe that is it's a more open and casual version of NaNoWriMo. Um, but, you know, so it's, it's less about a framework of writing 50,000 words. You can write whatever word count you want to. You can revise. You can write epic poems or collections of short stories or a poem a day, whatever you want. Um, but, but about 70,000 people participate in it. So it's still a pretty significant event. And then on the website now, I mean, we have a bunch of community functions. So you can form uh, more intimate writing groups with your friends through our writing groups function. Uh, our forums are always bustling with, with every topic under, under the sun, um, or every writing topic to talk about with people. Um, and then you, you can also set up your own, define your own writing projects separate from the events we, we do. So if you wanted to write a novel in six months and you wanted to write 100,000 words, you could set up a project for six months, 100,000 words, and you could do that all important accountability tracking, right? Like whether you want to write 1,000 words a day or 500 words a day or 2,000 words a day. You just, we believe in that. We say a goal and a deadline is a creative midwife. And so that's the kind of framework we really, I think, I think espouse to writers as one way to thrive. And so you can do that for any time period throughout the year. I know everybody is always so energized by seeing that daily word count counter just slowly tick up towards your goal. And it's always a great feeling when you somehow manage to get ahead of it. Um, yeah. That's always a good feeling. Um, Grant, we did touch on rebels versus purists just a little bit. Talk to me <laughs> a little bit about the difference. Yeah, well, you know, as NaNoWriMo has gotten so much bigger and as people, you know, people, some people have been doing it for 20 years and every year for 20 years. And so there are a lot of, you know, those people have a lot of novels in their drawers. So sometimes instead of starting a new novel from scratch, like the purists, you have to start a new novel from scratch. You have to write 50,000 words in a month of a new novel. So rebels, they might be more interested in writing the second book in a series, or they might be more interested in revising a novel or writing a memoir. We've had people write PhD dissertations during NaNoWriMo. So a rebel is more like a camp NaNoWriMo participant. And so they're participating in NaNoWriMo, but they're just setting their own rules. And that's fine, to tell you the truth. I just, you know, our premise is, as I said earlier, write for a month make creativity a priority, do it however you want to. And that's, I, I did want to touch on this because I've had so many people kind of walk up to me or they'll be introduced to me and they'll say, oh, I'm so sorry. I participated in NaNoWriMo last year, but I only wrote 10,000 words. And, and as if that's an, a, a confession, an act of failure, you know, and 10,000 words is a very impressive amount of words to write a month. And so we celebrate all writing. And I always do the math for them. I'm like, if you write 10,000 words in a month, if you do that every month, 
throughout the year. That's 120,000 words a year. That's a, a lot of writing. So be proud of that. Absolutely. You know, it's really funny because I ran into the same situation this year with Camp Nano. I did not quite hit my goal. I got to about 28,000 words and was aiming, I think, for 40. And yeah. I was talking to one of my critique group friends and they were like, well, still, that's 28,000 words closer on those rewrites. I said, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I'm just... I wish I had hit the goal and they, you know, came, brought me around because they made the same point you did. It's still writing. It's still getting words on the page. And, you yeah. know, one of my favorite authors, Terry Pratchett, um, I think, wrote something like between 400 and 800 words a day. Yeah. So, I mean, and he had a goodness gracious look at the books that he has written. So a lot yeah. of times short and steady. But it's in this case, I think Nano is just a great way to try to test your writing endurance in a way. I think so. I think it's a good way to test your writing endurance and kind of stretch, you know, flex your muscles, stretch your muscles. Um, but it's also about showing up regularly to write. And uh, so I'm glad you mentioned that Terry Pratchett writing 400 or 800 words a day, because I think it's really showing up every day and like writing four or 500 words a day. Again, that adds up to a lot of words. I think that if my math is right, 400 words a day would be 12,000 words in a month. So again, you can become a very successful novelist writing at that pace. And that might just be half hour, hour a day of writing. Right. All right. We have got some other great ones. Okay. Yeah. On the debate, another split debate. Grant, yeah. are you a planner, a pantser, or a plantser? Wow. So just so everybody knows these weird words that we're using here, um, we have uh, planners who like to meticulously, or, you know, there's a whole bunch of different ways to plan your novel. You can do it really meticulously. Like I, I think James Patterson writes a 20 page single spaced outline for his novels. Um, or you can pants your novels, which mean you, you show up on November 1st and you sometimes don't even have an idea. Sometimes pantsers just show up and write and see where it goes. So there's two extremes there. And so in between the planners and the pantsers, there's the plantsers. They kind of ha happy medium of both which is what I see myself as. I mean, I, I used to be more of a strict pantser, but I, I, I find that there's not a pantser on the planet who's entirely secure with that process, which I think is too bad because I think that there's a lot of creativity that happens in the, on the pantsing side. But I like to have uh, at least, I, I say that I like to know what direction I'm going in. So I like to kind of have some directional markers or just, just, just a sense of where the story is going. But I also like to write for the mystery of the story. That's what intrigues me. So when I've done meticulous outlines for my novel, what I find is that after I'm done with the outline, I don't feel like writing the novel. I've kind of already told the story. And so I think if you are a planner, I think it's really good for you to leave room to find that mystery of the story, to write for the mystery, because I think there's a lot of creativity that happens there. And I think, it, who is it, Robert Frost, who said, if, uh, no surprise in the writer, no surprise in the reader. And so I think we always have to be writing for the surprise. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm a planter. Yeah, and guys, throw what you are in the chat or what you think you are, at least. You know, yeah, what are you, what are you, Micah? Uh, I'm a planter too. I am one of these people that I will try to outline kind of according to seven, um, plot, uh, step seven, um, goodness gracious, the seven point structure, get my right. midpoint, all of that good stuff kind of sketched out. But then from there, I just go ahead and dive into writing and hope that the characters will eventually take over. <laughs> yeah, that's the way the best. The, I mean, that's what you really want is your characters to take over, no matter how you approach it. Okay, we've got some folks that are panner, plan, uh, yeah. planters, plantsers, all over the Here's place. Here's a good one. S somebody said pantser for the rough draft, plotter for revision. And I think that's a really good way to approach it too. I, I sometimes say that when you're being a pantser for the rough draft, that's a diff just a different form of planning, right? And so you've like explored your story idea in the rough draft, which I call the zero draft or the discovery draft. And then I oftentimes will write the outline after that. So I'm the same way, a plotter for the revisions. I get more and more organized as I go along. I, th I think I saw one that says best intentions of being a planner, but end up a pantser. <laughs> That's what I mean. Pantsers never quite feel secure. <laughs> that continuum, I swear to God. So anyway, but that's good. Um, I, th I think, you know, in the end, I think part of NaNoWriMo is a creative experiment to begin with. And so I always mm -hmm. encourage people to experiment with one part of their creative process every time they do NaNoWriMo. And so I plan in different ways when I've planned and uh, just try to find new ways to, to explore novels. 
I'm just transitioning it over because we are in October. This is kind of known as Nano's prep month. Yeah. So what kind of prep do you suggest maybe um, individuals look at that are doing this, especially if we've got first timers? I think we've got a couple of folks that would love to get some advice on making their first time a success. Yeah. Well, you know, we, 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 we realized that as we went along that, you know, like inviting people just to show up for the party and asking them to like, just start dancing. You know, sometimes people need whatever dance lessons before the party, I guess that's mm -hmm. the way to put it. So we have a whole nano prep season, as you mentioned, and on the website, we have a whole nano prep curriculum and calendar of events. So for the last uh, five weeks or so, I think, you know, we have uh, virtual write-ins, we have different webcasts like this happening. Uh, we have a different theme for every week. So this week, uh, the theme is time management. Um, and so you can kind of follow the curriculum. You don't, if you miss the previous five weeks, you can go, it, you don't have to be there in person for everything. So it's more like you schedule it on your own and there's, you know, all these resources are archived. So yeah, I think that that's a really great way to engage. I think um, also though, they're, they're um, you know, like in, on Instagram, we have this whole like 30 day Instagram challenge. Uh, I think that's a great way uh, just, just to both kind of, again, prep your novel, but also take part in the community because we believe the community can be a fantastic source of, of inspiration and accountability. And so, yeah, our forums are open. Um, you know, you can form writing groups. There's just a lot of different ways to prepare. And I think the reason I mentioned time management too is there's way to prepare, ways to prepare for novel writing in terms of like outlining your novel, you know, doing a character backgrounder, plotting like the seven points like you did. But there's also ways to prepare. And I find these equally as important, if not more important, of like thinking, how are you going to write? Like it takes me two hours to write 1700 words a day in November. How am I going to find those two hours? You know, like I don't normally have two hours to write, so I have to open up that time. So that means I have to like maybe wake up earlier, stay up later, write during my lunch breaks, maybe write more on the weekends, do a lot of power writing. A lot of people do that because the weekends are really the only, only time they have. So really think about how are you going to do it, not just that you're going to do it. Yeah, and that's definitely something that is so important. And to me, also being aware of what your schedule is and what your constraints are as well. I mean, if you're somebody who is working a nine to five job, it may be a little bit difficult for you to find time during the day to do your writing. There may exactly. be time that it's better to go to your weekends. And there's all kinds of calculations you guys can use. Um, I'm sure everyone across the internet, I think they had like a daily word count counter where you would say, you know, hey, I can only do weekends or I can only do weekdays, that sort of thing. So all of those things are great to kind of check out before you actually get in to November and get into your writing. Um, other resources, check out guys, if you are on social media, a lot of times Preptober will be trending on hashtags, things like that. That's yep. P-R-E-P, usually underscore, sometimes hyphen, sometimes it's all one word, Yeah. <laughs> -E yeah, and, and that's, that's and that's run by a participant, just so you know, that's like not ours, so, but right. that's like a great sign of our participants are so community minded yeah. that, yeah, they create things like that. So that's always a great way to kind of see it. Like Grant said, it's not officially associated with NaNoWriMo, but you often find um, awesome resources in those places. So always um, take a look for that sort of thing. Um, of course, here at Writing Aid, we've got resources. Um, I think there was a session that I did a while back with um, PWA that kind of covers some things like um, scheduling, burnout, all that good stuff. And we'll make sure that's out in your um, replay links as well. So you guys have that on hand. And that actually does bring me to another big question I've seen a lot of in our Q&A, which is how do you deal with burnout or how do you avoid burnout during this month? Because 50,000 words a month, <laughs> lot it's a lot and and honestly the pattern that a lot of people um do is that they're, they're very excited about their novels to start and so they might you know have a great first few days or a great first week or 10 days and then usually when you, you hit that wall it's what we call the muddy middle and i think i, I was thinking about this the other day how you know most novels take a year or two or more to write and and nanorama is kind of like a condensed version of the overall Kind of novel writing journey and so you're you're going to hit the muddy middle in a lot of different ways uh, with your novel writing and it's not just burnout it's like self-doubt you start wondering if the story is any good if you're any good as a writer if you're wasting your time all these questions and so i think there are a bunch of different ways to handle it i mean one i think that sometimes sometimes and this is like something you have to personally judge 
sometimes for me, it is a matter of like just digging in, being disciplined, being determined, keep showing up, finding a pathway through that. But sometimes it's a matter of saying, okay, maybe I should take a day off. Maybe I should uh, watch a movie, uh, read a book, somehow do something to replenish my creative juices. Um, sometimes it might be a matter of going, you know, we have like one thing on the website is people should sign up for their regions. So if you're in Manchester, England, as I think I saw, like there is a Manchester region where NaNoWriMo people gather. So you can get a lot of uh, creative sustenance from your community. We also have things like um, at NaNoWriMo Word Sprints on Twitter. Those operate year round. And again, those are places of encouragement where they're like writing prompts and writing games uh, to help people get through. Uh, what, I don't believe in writer's block to tell you the truth. Um, but yeah, burnout, burnout has just so many sides to it. Um, but I do think that, that, that it, 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 again, like this is where NaNoWriMo is good because it's a, it's a, the best way to learn to write a novel is to do it. And one of the things, parts of writing any novel is burnout. And so think about how, what's the best way you're going to handle and recognize your own burnout. Right. Absolutely. And you would touch on write-ins. Can we talk a little bit about what a write-in is? And also if we can quickly um, touch on word crawls as well, because that's another fun one that I don't know that a lot of folks know about. I hear a lot of people who know about the write-ins, but I have folks that have never heard of a word crawl before. Yeah. So write-ins, uh, sorry, I didn't explain this earlier. There's so many things to cover, but um, so we have municipal liaisons. There are 900 of them and they're around the world. So yeah, as I mentioned, um, Maybe not in Clinton, Iowa, but I do know there, there are municipal liaisons in central Iowa because I've been back and met with that group and, and different parts of Iowa. And so uh, we do have all these locations. And so usually they, they organize like write-ins, they're in-person gatherings, just like Chris did with his 20 friends in Starbucks after work. Um, so cafes, bookstores, uh, libraries, people gather to write together. And the, and the municipal liaisons are kind of their, their coaches and therapists and cheerleaders and party planners. So they're really great at organizing people. And um, yeah, so I, usually they are in person, but obviously this year with the pandemic, uh, they will be on Zoom. But um, yeah, they, they are very successful. And, um, you know, I think um, in terms of accountability, that's one reason we believe in community is that it, you're less likely to stop writing if other people know you're writing a novel. Um, and also they're just like, you know, I think like writing a novel, as you mentioned earlier, Micah, like it, it can be a strange thing. Like sometimes other people don't know. Um, they, they question why you're doing this, you know? And so it's nice to go into a gathering where other people are doing it and they understand what's involved. They understand burnout in the middle of writing a novel or they understand planning and planting and, and pantsing. And let's just go over kind of the structure that write-ins follow. I know there's probably every um, municipal liaison probably follows their own structure, but I think we do probably need to touch a little bit maybe on sprints and how those work, just because that's all of this is kind of nano lingo that I feel like may have bled out a little bit into the larger writing community. But I still think feel like we get some writers that go, wait, a writing sprint? What, what are you guys doing? So. Yeah, good point. You're, you're absolutely right. A lot of the NaNoWriMo things have bled out into the larger community, but they are very specific to the NaNoWriMo experience. And so let me see your definition. You're, you asked about word sprints. Mm -hmm. So word sprint is simply when um, like a municipal liaison or somebody on Twitter on our word sprints account will give a prompt, you know, and uh, it could be any prompt and then it'll be, you can write as much as you can for like they'll say a timed period. So five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And so the premise of it is, and I've held hundreds of these, I've done it with thousands of people and I've never seen a person not be able to write. And this is why I don't believe in writer's block because the premise is, is this kind of like improvisational writing. You just start writing to that prompt. And it's amazing to me that so many stories are in our heads, so many words. And if you just open the door a crack, they'll gush forth. And you'll get some surprising gems in there too. And so, um, so yeah, it's really about, and, and if you don't know like um, the rules of improv acting, it's, it's that you, you're on stage and you always say yes and to your fellow actors. So anything they do, anything Micah does right now, I have to build on that and riff on it improvisationally. And that's the thing with the writing sprint too, is you're supposed to say yes and to your words and thought. You're not supposed to overthink things. So again, that's a technique to banish your inner editor and to, to find a way to let your words flow. 
And it helps you get a higher word count every day too. So if you're worried about hitting that 1700 words, like a five or 10 minute writing burst, like when you mentioned that Terry Pratchett uh, writes 400 words a day, like some people write 400 words in, in five or 10 minutes if you wanna write really quickly. Yeah, and I think it comes down to exactly what you said, kind of shutting that inner editor off and guys, if you're interested in write-ins, and um, we are actually going to be hosting our own kind of mm -hmm. um, NaNoWriMo Facebook group within Pro Writing Aid, I will be posting the link to that shortly in the chat, but you guys are feel, feel free to join. We'll also be doing um, weekly write-ins throughout the month as well. We're trying to make sure we schedule those so it doesn't conflict with the ones that are happening for um, Nano sponsored. but we're going to be doing some. A colleague of mine is going to be kind of covering the UK and Europe. European time zones, and I'll actually be covering some of our North American time zones. And Grant, the um, official uh, write-ins, when are those supposed to be this year? I know they've been typically on Wednesdays in the past, right? Are you talking about our virtual write-ins? Yes. So, so we do virtual write-ins here at HQ. Um, and I actually don't, there is a calendar on the site. Um, when you sign up, there's a dashboard and there's a, a, a calendar for your region activities and a calendar for the HQ activities. And so you'll find it there. And so I'm not sure if we've just uh, um, have regular days yet. I'm looking at the calendar for October and I see, looks like some are happening on Friday. So yeah, Friday might be the regular day. Friday at one, it looks like, at least in October. Yeah. Guys, I am just pasting the link to our Facebook group in the chat. Feel free to join us. It is just going to be another support outlet because again, NaNoWriMo provides a ton and the more support we can get, the better during this month because it is a huge undertaking as Francis said. Yeah, and at Nano Word Sprints, which is our Twitter um, uh, Word Sprint handle, that's separate from the NaNoWriMo account. And so there are Word Sprints uh, 24 hours a day throughout November. And so our municipal liaisons, our volunteers around the world, like have different shifts. So those are really fun to do as well. Um, yeah. All right. And we've got a couple of more questions. We have some folks that are interested in what exactly this winning entails. They're curious, mm -hmm. you know, is this just kind of a self challenge or is there some kind of a specific contest that goes on? You know, <laughs> what, what's kind of wrapped up in Nano? Yeah, Every, Nano if, 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 if you win, we give you a brand new car. Um, no, uh, there, there is the big prize you get is the gift of writing your novel. That's, that's how I like to answer it. And I think that is a big gift. So winning means uh, writing 50,000 words in a month. Um, there is a certificate that you get on the site. Uh, there are many online badges that you will get along the way, badges for writing streaks or certain writing milestones or writing behaviors. Uh, but it's really about the novel itself, you know, that is a gift and it's a gift that you give to yourself and that we help you give. I think I was around whenever you guys um, implemented the badges and all that stuff. And I thought that was so cool to have kind of that gamified aspect of it. Cause that is fun to finally go, oh my gosh, you know, I hit seven days in a row or I hit 10 K or I hit 15 K. Oh, it's so motivating to try to hit that streak. The streaks get me. I really want, I, I hate it when I, when I have a streak broken. Mm -hmm. Um, we have got a couple of other questions that are just um, around if you are writing in another language, can you still count yourself as doing nano? You know, is that something? Absolutely. That Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And we have some other folks that are talking about confirmation. Okay. So can we talk a little bit about the process of how you essentially confirm your win, all of that good stuff? We do it completely on the honor system. You know, uh, like I said, it is nothing's at stake here. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, there's no reason to cheat. Uh, it's really a personal challenge in the end. Um, and every day we have a word count tracker. This is a key part of NaNoWriMo. Mm -hmm. So, it, or setting up any kind of writing project and goal deadline uh, framework throughout the year too. So you enter your word count, how much you've written each day. And so it might be 300 words, it might be uh, 2,500 words. And so there's this, you know, line going through your kind of medium amount of words that you need to write every word that go, every day that goes up to 50,000 words and bars beneath it you know and so either you're at par or above or below and so that's a game unto itself actually I think you said it Micah that you really try to stay ahead of your daily word count um, you know median 
And so, uh, and it is, you know, they've done psychological studies on this and people get more uh, of an emotional reward just by meeting their goals every day than by any external prize. And I think that that is so cool. And so I always say it's the most important technology on our site. And, and the shorthand for me too, is that it's, if, if anyone, I think Fitbit's become very pop popular, the way that people measure their steps when they walk or jog. And so I call uh, this kind of tracking on the site Fitbit for novelists. Absolutely. And yeah. we've got a few questions kind of about regions. And I think this is going into the fact that everything is kind of virtual for now, unfortunately. Yeah. Of if you are somewhere that doesn't necessarily have a local region, can you join any region? Can you join, you know, kind of the closest by just pop into the virtual write-ins and all of that? Absolutely. And what's cool these days with, I mean, the, there are some benefits to having things be virtual instead of just in person. And like, for instance, I did, I appeared at a, a NaNoWriMo write-in um, in Naperville last year. And there just happened to be a writer from Brooklyn who was part of that, you know? And so it, it makes, it's like the world is one big region at this point. So you can participate. And, and NaNoWriMo, it's not about, there's no regional boundaries. So we, we train our volunteers to be welcoming to everybody. Um, so you, you can literally go anywhere in the world to be part of a, part of a write-in. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just a few more points, I think, touching on the rebel point that if you're continuing a novel, then you would be in the rebel camp. Yep. And then a question about nonfiction writers. Are they yes. part of the NO2? <laughs> Are they? Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, we say technically, if you call it a novel, we call it a novel. Um, and, and as I said earlier, I just want people to write. And we do get a lot of memoirs. I think writing memoir is very similar to writing a novel. I've actually written a nonfiction book during NaNoWriMo. It just happened to be a book that I was on deadline for. And so, yeah, I think uh, the whole NaNoWriMo system works for nonfiction writers as well. So you can do it with your rebel status and be proud of it. Yep. Absolutely, because I think that's actually one of the self-awarded badges is if you're a rebel, you can have your um, rebel um, badge on your profile page, right? <laughs> yes, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. All right, just looking at a few more questions. Okay, great one on how to handle procrastination. And I know this is always a fun one. So Grant, what are your tips? Procrastination is so fascinating to me because I actually think procrastination, and they've done studies on this too, actually, that it can be really good for your creativity because sometimes by avoiding something, you're still doing something in your brain. It's maybe even unrecognized to you, but something's happening. You're solving that problem. And then by the time you're kind of over your fear or over whatever obstacles are keeping you from doing it, then your creativity kind of blooms. Uh, but I do think it can also be a dangerous thing because it can keep you from doing the things that are necessary or that you want to do in life. And so I think one part of procrastination, if it's in that dangerous territory, is to really analyze why you're procrastinating. And I think that a lot of people procrastinate because of fear. And so I would really evaluate that. Like, why, what is making you fearful to write if it's going to be writing, for instance? Or what is, it, is, is inhibiting you? And I think so getting that kind of metacognition or just like evaluating the reasons that you're procrastinating, I think will help you get over the procrastination itself. And I think like if, if you want to do this, if you want to write and write a novel, but something like that is holding you back, you know, like you've really got to analyze that because if, it's, if you want to do something, you must take pleasure in it. You must take joy. You must take meaning. And so focus on those good things, the things you want out of this activity. Um, yeah, I suppose procrastination affects us all. Like sometimes exercising is just uncomfortable, but after, after we exercise, we usually feel really good. We're happy we did it. And it was Dorothy Parker who said, uh, I don't like writing. I like having written. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think, yeah, I think most writers do know this feeling about when writing yeah. can be uncomfortable, but afterwards you get this, have this immense sense of satisfaction. So I think remembering that, that you will feel really good afterwards. Yeah. And that actually hits on, I'm a big psychology nerd myself and um, hits on some of the stuff that's discussed kind of in cognitive behavioral therapy circles about having if then plans, things like that of saying, if I go ahead and get this writing done, then I will feel better afterwards. All of those can be little tricks that can help. 
Yeah. Now, another one um, that one of our users touched on was asking where, I think, Grant, where do you write? But I think that also kind of d dives into the question of how do you get your writing environment prepared? Wow, that is one I wish I had a uh, more elaborate, um, whatever, e explanation of. I've always dreamed of having this wonderful, beautiful office. And, and I was just, I, I was at a friend's house the other day and she had this great office. And I was telling her that my life has gone the wrong direction because my office space has, has been, been condensed and, and has shrunk over the years. And it doesn't really exist anymore because I, I, I live in this small house with like uh, three other people, two of them, my kids and a dog. So I essentially write in a recliner with a laptop. Thank God for laptops. And I wake, fortunately though, I wake up early in the morning uh, just by nature. I never set an alarm clock. So I'm usually up by 4.30 or 5. So I get in an hour or two of writing. And, and that's my environment is just having time alone in the darkness with a cup of coffee. Uh, but I wish I had a beautiful uh, office or writing corner or a little nook, but I no longer do just because I live in a high priced city without many much room. And I think what that really touches on is that your environment isn't necessarily just your surroundings. It can be the time of day you're writing. It can be the conditions under which you're writing. Heck, it can even be whether you're drinking coffee or tea while you're writing. So guys, yeah. really think about that whenever you're trying to set up your routine, because, you know, for me, I'm a definite night owl. There's no way I will be up early in the morning to do, get my writing done, but I can certainly get it done late at night. So try not to fight your own biological rhythms, too, because that's going to make your life a lot easier if you can go with the flow rather than trying to fight that. So. Really Really good point, Mike. And I think that that is one of the lessons of NaNoWriMo is not to get too precious about your writing, but to find spaces in your life where you can write. And that's why when earlier when you were talking about uh, people find ways to write on subway cars or buses, mm -hmm. you know, in unlikely places, but just to get the writing done. Yeah, I know I have a um, writer friend in one of my guilds that basically she would write whenever she was dropping her kids off at Taekwondo, things like that. She'd have yeah. a friend who was about five minutes and she would just be writing away because everyone would always ask her, you know, you've written like 100,000, 200,000 words just in a space of like three months. How are you doing that? And she says, you know, I just write literally anywhere, anytime. You know, and that also touches on too, are you a writer that can get away with having your time split up? Or are you a writer that not kind of needs a good long chunk of time blocked out? Because a lot yep. of times, guys, this goes into the psychology of flow states, things like that. If you're looking for a great primer on that, I'd highly suggest looking into some of Stephen Kotler's work. He has a great course on Creative Live that he covers a lot of that. And Grant, I think you've also got a course on Creative Live for Nano too. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I love that stuff. And I think NaNoWriMo yeah. is a great doorway to finding the flow state of writing, actually. Yeah. I've written a lot about that. So yeah. all of that stuff is worth checking out. Just kind of get yourself prepared because we've got a couple of weeks left before Nano actually starts. So your best bet is probably concentrate on just the mental end of things and going, okay, how am I going to get things set up? Mm -hmm. um, all right, taking a look, another look at our questions. Yeah, great questions. Let's see. What happens if you're halfway through your story and you realize that you've got a better idea? Should you stop <laughs> writing one and continue on the other or just continue on with the one that you're losing interest in? Well, I think in the month of NaNoWriMo, I would advise people to stick with their original idea and just finish it out. Uh, I think the thing about novel ideas is that the, the idea that you're not working on always or often looks better you know novel ideas have a have a way of doing that they look the, the one the one that's out there the next one always looks better than the one you're working on and that's because i don't know like i think you have to remember back to the the, the one when you got that original novel idea you probably thought it was super special too <laughs> and it just becomes a little special because you've been living with it for a while um so the new idea always looks better i think there's a quote i think that's what plot bunnies means um but you know like I guess instead of plot bunnies, it's novel idea bunnies, right? There's always a new one hopping by that you're, you want to chase. But I think there's really something special about finishing a novel and, and actually seeing it through until the end. And that is part of the gift. And so if you're always hopping around or, or chasing those novel idea bunnies, you're not going to get that deeper satisfaction of having like seen one novel idea all the way through. Always remember, you can mix and match ideas from anywhere. You might have just a that plot too. bunny that's a character. See if you can work them into the current 
plot. You know, that's yep. a fun one that I've learned from some of my friends is you, you can always recycle ideas. And that's something to keep in mind too. Cause I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves that the first draft we should produce should be what the novel ultimately ends up looking like and that's going to be a long journey of editing rewriting all of that good stuff so don't pressure yourself you know and I think that comes down to a lot of the lesson of nano is try to take it easy on yourself in a lot of cases you know exactly. try to let go of that perfectionism and try to let go of the things that are that you're saying well no I have to do this it's for the fun you know yeah. ultimately exactly exactly you know, that said, Erin um, Morgenstern, gosh, I'm not going to be able to quote her, but but if you Google, she wrote um, uh, Night Circus. Space. Night Circus, yeah. She wrote yeah. Night Circus during NaNoWriMo. She has some great stories about, she wrote that over two or three NaNoWriMo's, and she has some great stories about her, like, hitting that muddy middle, hitting a wall, having, like, these strange ideas appear to her. You know, they almost were, like, the, the whole Night Circus concept almost was, like, a whole new novel idea. And then oh. she just plopped it in the middle one, yeah. middle of one. So yeah, uh, read some interviews with her and it'll, interesting stuff there. Yeah, and Grant, can you talk about maybe some of the famous authors that might have been started during Nano, if not their published works, they at least participated at some point. Yeah, so many now. Um, Hugh Howey uh -huh. wrote Wool, which is being uh, turned into a, I think a, a TV series with Netflix or something with Rachida Jones. Um, Marissa Meyer uh, writes with us every November. She develops all of her novels um, as NaNoWriMo novels, even if she can't participate in November because of her writing schedule. She does her own private NaNoWriMo's. Um, Elizabeth Acevedo has written with us. Um, Sarah Gruen, Rainbow Rowell. Um, yeah, just so many authors. Uh, Emily X. R. Pan. Mary Robinette Cowell. Um, yeah, I could just uh, list authors uh, on and on, but so many uh, award-winning and best-selling authors have done NaNoWriMo. And I think like when I go to writing conferences, I feel like especially younger writers, almost every writer under 30 has done it at least once. And so I think that we'll reach a point where almost every writer <laughs> who's published anything has done NaNoWriMo. Which, hey guys, it means you're in good company, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, we've got time for a few more questions. I do want to touch on really quickly, we have some folks who are either writing by hand or writing on typewriters. Any mm -hmm. advice for word counts, things like that? <laughs> yeah, I love that people uh, don't only write on laptops or computers. Uh, that when I first, my first NaNoWriMo write-in, uh, a guy told me he was doing, and this is back in like 2010, he was writing his whole novel on his phone. So this was a very foreign thing Goodness. to do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but I'm always impressed when I hear about somebody um, uh, using a typewriter or uh, um, writing by hand. And I do think that those working in different ways can really help your creativity. Like I like to like, sometimes when I'm hitting um, a block state or procrastination state or the muddy middle of a novel, I like getting off the computer and handwriting because I think it brings out different ideas. Um, but in terms of like counting the words, like usually for like writing them, we, we count the words that you would get on a typical line horizontally, count the lines on a page and just kind of do some rough math in terms of getting 50,000 words, unless you want to transcribe it or use some fancy technology. But yeah, don't be too, you know, detail oriented with the word count, just an approximation works. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's always good to remember all the different modalities we have available to us. You know, I've recently discovered doing longhand writing via tablet, and that has yeah. been a game changer for me because I usually do a laptop, but doing it on the tablet has somehow jarred a few things loose. I guess it's because I'm not sitting here staring at my terrible handwriting while I'm doing it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing that you can write on a tablet and upload it, you know, like mm -hmm. so or dictate it. So guys, if you have other questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. We're just going to touch on a couple of more. Um, the difference between a novel and a novella, because we have one user that said that 50,000 actually falls into the novella category. It can, yeah. Um, it is really like a long novella or a short novel. It's kind of in a kind of a gray zone there. And I, I'm not big into definitions of writing. I think um, novellas, um, are sort of as much about a writer's mindset as length. Uh, but novellas, for those people who don't know, they tend to be like 20 to 40,000 words. Um, and 
I think there's this zone where they, you know, like short stories, I guess, go up to about 20,000 words, but they tend to be more in the 10 to 15 or even shorter than that. Um, so I wouldn't get hung up on definitions. I would just like see where the story takes you and the story, you'll find the right link for the story. I think the only thing to say about novellas is traditionally it's been harder to publish a novella than a novel. Uh, for some reason, publishers think that they're harder to sell, but don't let that discourage you. I love novellas. That, I'm kind I'm of in vogue now. I'm just posting a couple of links in the chat as yeah. we are beginning to wrap up the hour. Uh -oh. One of them would be a link to NaNoWriMo's official site so you guys can get signed up if you are not already. And the other is going to be to our um, Pro Writing Aid NaNoWriMo group. You'll probably see me in there a good bit popping about, um, answering questions, that good stuff. Expect to see me at write-ins as well. And I should say that when people sign up, uh, thank you for putting that link in. Um, it's all free. We want everybody to be able to tell their story. So uh, we're a nonprofit and we will always be free. That's our mission is to help people tell their stories. So got yeah, nothing you to know, lose. And Grant, that also, um, I do want to also touch on the ways that users can support NaNoWriMo if they'd like, because as a nonprofit, I think you guys do a lot of important work. So. Thank you, Micah. Yeah, we we if you sign up, you will you will hear all about our fundraising activities. We have uh, several things planned. We usually we I mean we're not usually we always try to have our fundraising be inspiring and writing oriented as well. And we appreciate anything that you can give us to help the cause. But we also, if you cannot, uh, if you don't have money right now, that's fine. We just want you to come in and write and feel welcome. And there is a great question here: Is there a launch of Nano on the first? A lot of Nano. <laughs> I, 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 I suppose like a launch party or something like launch that. party i think most regions do have their own regional launch parties and then we're hosting our own nanorimo kickoff here at the office and there'll be more details uh coming forth we have some webcasts with authors and some other activities planned fantastic yeah. so guys probably your best bet is to go ahead and sign up for an account and make sure that you have taken a look at the schedule because there are events that go on all throughout the month and it's uh, basically the official site is going to be the best way to keep up with all of that. Good, well said. <laughs> and hopefully we will also see you all at a lot of thank goodness it's over parties by the end of the month. That's so. right, those <laughs> are fun. Yeah, and, and since regions came up earlier, I'm actually a member, I have like one main region, which is the East Bay region, <laughs> because I live in the East Bay in, San, or around, in the Bay Area, but I'm, I'm a member of, I think four or five regions total so you can be a member of several different regions at once and participate and grant how do you do that multiple sign up for our users that might be unfamiliar yeah on the website just go to under the community tab um, you will see find a region and if you go there you can just follow the steps great great so guys i'm just going to take one more question here Oh, and just a reminder, guys, on signing up for Nano, that's just a free account. And then the accountability with groups will come in the form of any of your forums, your um, regions with your multiple liaisons. Again, Pro Writing Aid has our own Facebook group that is going to be just international. So all of those are ways to stay accountable because I think we touched on those, but we may not have linked that up as accountability groups. Uh, okay, we touched on our perfectionism. Um, I guess any last tips for everyone just getting prepared? Any last tips? I was just clicking to try to save the chat because I want to read through everybody's comments afterwards. <laughs> I've never done that. But anyway, last tips. Let me think. I think the thing, so many people, as I think I mentioned this earlier, but they will start with enthusiasm and they'll oftentimes maybe get sick or have a big work project or have something in their life happen and they might quit uh, or they'll fall behind on their word count goals, you know, and they'll ha that'll happen like after five days. And I think too many people get discouraged at that point where they might fall behind by a thousand and 2000 words, and then they'll just quit entirely. And so I would say, don't quit entirely. I mean, it, because it's good, as we said, just to show up and write every day, whether it's 400 words or 4,000 words. So it's good just to do that unto itself. 
And you can also recalibrate your goals. Like if you know you're not going to hit 50,000 words, then shoot for 25,000 words. Or maybe it's not a, a, an overall word count, but go for, start going for streaks. Try to write for 10 days in a row. Right. So again, remember that the major premise isn't only, don't get too discouraged. Like just focus on how you can make this work for you. And then you can always come back next year with this great NaNoWriMo knowledge and then try again. Right. So just don't quit. Yeah, and I know whenever we were setting up our NaNoWriMo group for um, Pro Writing Aid, whenever we were just getting kind of opinions in our general group, people were saying, well, I don't know that I can go for 50,000 this year. And I told everyone, guys, it's the spirit of the thing. You don't have to hit 50,000. Your goal from the beginning doesn't have to necessarily be 50,000. It's great to aim for that. But if you know you've got a big stressful month at work, November's going to be super slammed for you. Just go for writing 25,000, change your goal, make it work for you. Cause ultimately it's the spirit of the thing. And it goes back to Grant, like you said, that rollicking writing party slash boot camp. Micah, you're a great uh, NaNoWriMo spokesperson. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> hire you. <laughs> well, like I said, it's my, probably my favorite time of the year as a writer. I just love it. It's been great for me finding community. I have found critique partners. I have found beta readers, all sorts of stuff. So what you guys do has always um, been wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Well, we appreciate the partnership with Pro Writing Aid. Um, and I love the chat here. You get, the, the attendees have been amazing. So that's why I wanted to save the chat. Absolutely. Well, guys, we are going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you all for attending. I hope to see you guys in the Facebook group. And if we don't see you there, I'm sure I will see you in the NaNoWriMo forums. Best of luck to everybody and can't wait till November 1st. Yeah. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs>